Hey everyone, welcome back to another NAT update, a FRO update, and Euronav update. This is the weekly update on the oil tanker market. Uh, my name is Adam, and if you haven't checked out my channel already, be sure to do so and like and subscribe for more content like this. Okay, so let's start with NAT. That's up 2% on the week. Finally, an up week for NAT. That's pretty damn good. Still on the month, we're down by 11%. Frontline, again, weekly update, ticker symbol FRO up about the same 2.27% on the month. So we're down by 7%. And your nav stock was the only stock that was oil tanker stock, at least that I watch that was down this week by 1%. And over the month, again, down by about 9%. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to give a few updates. So, you know, a couple of videos ago on NAT, I said how the Hansen family, which is the NAT board of directors, they always announce when they purchase shares on their press releases, but not when um, they sell shares of NAT. Okay, so one commenter actually asked me to um, reach out to the CEO, and I thought that was a good idea. So I actually did, and I asked him uh, if he would do an interview on my channel. We'll see how he responds. As well, I also asked him if he would be able to comment on exactly what this screenshot shows. That pretty much shows that uh, with their filing in the SEC, they, um, of course, they announce when they purchase shares, but not when they sell shares, right? And I asked them to clarify that. So uh, I'm going to send it as soon as I finish this video, and we'll see if they respond, okay? Um, so I just wanted a quick update on that. And if we're looking at the spot rates on Thursday and Friday, we can see that they're actually up for Suzmax tankers. Um, by quite a bit according to this trend. So 3,200 again, not nearly close to the 8,000 that it takes to break even But we're getting there. However, the VLCC carriers looking like a 10-day downtrend here as we can see here um, Pretty low amount of money that are earning um, Considering that it carries twice the amount of oil than a Suze max tanker at 4,900. Okay, and on Friday we can see that uh, Suze max again was around 3,400 and VLCC was around 5,200, okay? And also Aftermax tends to be uptrending if you look at the 10-day average, just as Suzmax vessels are uptrending, but not VLCC carriers. And I think that's because as VLCC carriers are offloading their floating storage, and VLCC carriers are actually the main uh, carriers that are carrying oil just for floating storage, uh, that tends to depress the, the spot rates down, okay? Uh, and finally, if we go onto the NAT investor relations page, they updated their tanker marker report, and this is of November 13th, so today, and it was actually um, a pretty well thought out report. So we're just going to take a minute to uh, go through this, and I'll explain what my thoughts are on this report. Okay, so first off, the infamous charts. Uh, so of course, we can see that these are the year-to-date averages prices for uh, the tanker market, specifically Suzmax. No, for like the overall rates in general. So the 2020 year to date, uh, and we can see it's setting just under 40,000. Okay, and we can see for 2018 and 2019, um, this the spot prices actually tended to be higher than the ones in 2020. So I thought that this trend would reverse um, when we would go into the fall and winter, but it looks like this trend of falling spot rates is just continuing to increase into fall and winter, okay? Hopefully that reverses soon with increased demand for oil, uh, especially since this vaccine is is touted from Pfizer, touted to be like 90% effective, which is huge, right? But of course, it's gonna take a really, really long time to actually get the vaccine on market and produce it en masse, right? So again, we can see spot rates are incredibly depressed if we compare it to 2018 and 2019 prices here, okay? Um, and here we can see that for the crude carriers, VLCC um, carriers are earning 7.7 thousand this week as compared to 11.6 thousand the previous week. Oh, so again, a decrease in the spot rate week over week. However, Suzmax rates uh, actually increase their spot rates week over week from 4.3 thousand to 5.8 thousand. Okay, so um, not terrible, but again, not a very good price um, for the spot rates, right? And that's reflected in this like depressed uh, spot rate price right here for 2020. Okay, um, and here, of course, just shows you the average time charter results for from 2012 until like the current prices right now. And we can see, of course, that they're 
at their lowest levels. And this is just from November to October, um, from November last year to October of this year. And we can see, of course, this huge spike was due to the pandemic where there was a huge increase in floating storage, especially for VLCC carriers, as we can see here. And then floating storage is generally offloading. Okay. And spot rates, of course, are not, um, are not as high, of course. So this is just a result for clean carriers, which I'm not too focused on again, but we can see the same general trend where clean carriers, a uh, huge spike up here and then trending downwards into October where we are right now. All right, and uh, the tanker weekly market index. So this, these are, this is the time charter results uh, in US dollars. So we can see here the yellow line represents the index. And of course, it's like almost at its lowest ever if we're looking across the whole tanker market. All right. Um, heading into November. OK, so right now this is pretty interesting. We can see that currently 7.6 percent of tanker fleet is used for floating storage. So this gray line here is the Suzmax vessels. Blue line is Aframax. Um, and here is the VLCC, right? So of course, this is showing that VLCC carriers are uh, still used for floating storage, but um, or that's the main tanker of interest used for floating storage just because it can carry the most amount of oil, uh, whereas all the other tankers are downtrending in terms of uh, whether or not they're used for floating storage, okay? Um, and this I'm not too interested about. Um, and here it's a pretty cool chart. So this is showing tanker deliveries as of the 13th of November. And we can see here, uh, tanker deliveries again, are their lowest ever in the past four years, right? So 2020, we can see overall 209 tankers were delivered as compared with 326 in 2019, uh, 283 in 2018 and 337 in 2017, right? So far, I believe. Um, so again, this is just the lowest deliveries of tankers ever, right? And if we go down, we can see, although that there's the lowest deliveries, there's also the lowest amount of tankers sold for scrapping, which is actually kind of a surprise because a lot of the tankers are more than 15 years old. I believe like around, um, over half the tanker market right now, uh, the tankers are actually close to scrapping age, right? So we can see in 2020, 36 tankers have been sold. Uh, for scrapping, whereas in 2019, the number was 52, 176, and 98, uh, going all the way back down to 2017, right? And we can see in this graph, we can see that this, uh, for scrapping, it looks like not too many tankers are actually being delivered to the scrapyards. Okay, uh, also the new orders of tankers, and this to me is positive news because, of course, when you're not scrapping tankers, that means there's more tankers on the market, which depresses the prices of the spot rates, right? So that's not good for companies like NAT. However, when you're ordering tankers, um, that's also not good, right? So we want to see a depressed rate for the number of ordered tankers because that means that um, the supply of tankers will be lower, so they'll be able to charge higher spot rates, right? And we can see that's also the lowest ever, right? So um, for 2020, the number ordered was 153, um, whereas in 2019, there were 202, 2018, there were 222, and 2017, 283, okay? So... That's, you know, a pretty good uh, sign to me, of course, because right now the market is depressed. So many companies are not ordering tankers. That being said, NAT actually did order two new tankers to be delivered in 2021. Um, so again, that's exciting news, especially if many tankers will be getting scrapped. Uh, although it doesn't look like it here in the next couple of years, a lot of tankers will be of scrapping age and not too many um, tankers are actually being ordered. Okay. Uh, and this is just a cool chart showing the crude carrier's position as of the 13th of November. Um, and laden, so filled, represented with the purple arrows, part laden, um, there's been represented with the blue arrows, and ballast with the yellow ones, okay? Uh, and then th these are the clean uh, tanker's positions, and uh, that was it. So I thought that this was a very, very well done report uh, by Clarkson Plateau ship broking okay uh, i think I, I don't know if i pronounced that right but again you can find it on under nat's investment relations page and they just um they just announced it right here so again i i thought that you know finally we have some update update on where the tar tanker market is at of course if we click on their latest news report we can be expecting their q3 results on monday november the 16th so of course watch out for that 
um, where I'll be doing an update on that. But yeah, if you did enjoy this update, and of course this email here that I'll send out very soon, uh, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time.